In this video, we'll finish the presentation of different coordinate systems that are often used at the undergraduate level in physics. The final one is the spherical coordinate system, which is typically used for problems that have some kind of spherical symmetry or take place on some kind of spherical system. Once again, we, we're going to define a small spherical volume element, which when we integrate, we're going to essentially sum up over several small of these volume elements. So the variables in spherical coordinates are typically denoted as R, which unfortunately is oftentimes the same variables used in cylindrical and polar coordinates, but instead of being the radius and the xy plane, it's now the distance from the origin to a point in the XYZ uh, system. So be careful with that. The polar angle is now replaced by phi instead of theta. And then we have an angle that's going, that starts at in the positive Z axis at zero, and then can go all the way down to the negative Z axis. And this one is typically denoted as theta. You should know that usually in math textbooks, these two are inverted. The polar angle remains theta and what's called the azimuthal angle is called phi. We'll try to stick to this convention throughout the course. So we can find the transformations between Cartesian and spherical coordinates as follows. If you have a point, for example, over here, then uh, with coordinates r, phi, and theta, and to find the corresponding x coordinate, you need to first project this point down to the x, y plane, which is done with r sine theta. And then you want the horizontal component of that point which you get by multiplying that by cos theta. Similarly, to get y, you project the point down to the xy plane with r sine theta, and then you want the vertical component you multiply by, by sine theta. And finally, to find the corresponding x coordinate, you simply project the point onto the z axis. And that's done by taking r cos theta. Sorry, this one should be phi, and this one's phi. All right, so if the polar angle subtending this element is d phi, and the one, the azimuthal angle subtending this element is d theta, then our volume element is going to be r d theta which will give you the length of this side. The length of this side is going to be dr. So it's the difference between the radius over here and the radius over here. And then finally, we need the length of this side. or sorry, we already got that side of this side over here, which you first need to project again by R sine theta, that gives you the length of this side, uh, sorry, rather of this side. And then to find the arc length of this radius subtended by this angle, you multiply it by d phi. Well, so just to rewrite it, our volume element in spherical coordinates is r square sine theta dr d phi d theta. And as an example, we can consider calculating 
volume of a sphere. In Cartesian coordinates, we're again only going to set up the integral and not actually solve it. And this is choosing a particular order of integration. You can choose others and it will change the limits of integration that you have to take into account. So over here, we first integrate with respect to Z. So you'll be integrating over the upper hemisphere of a sphere with this boundary and then the lower hemisphere at this boundary. We then integrate with respect to Y. That'll take you across or around the X, Y plane. Uh, yeah, and then finally you integrate with respect to X going from one side of the sphere all the way to the other, so minus r to r. And as you can see, this integral will be fairly involved to solve. In contrast, in spherical coordinates, we can once again evaluate each integral independently. So for a sphere of radius r, once again, I'm using r prime as my dummy variable of integration. d phi has to go around the entire xy plane. So it goes from zero to two pi. d theta, the azimuthal angle goes from positive set all the way to negative set. So this goes from zero to pi. It only goes through half of the plane and the radius goes from zero all the way to the radius of the sphere. And each one of these integrals will give you these values, which simplify to give you the familiar formula for the volume of a sphere. Again, in a much simpler and compact way than if you had chosen to do it in this way. So this concludes the three main coordinate systems that we're going to use in this class. They represent a way of changing variables that uh, you saw often in electromagnetism. There are, however, other ways of uh, changing variables and other coordinate systems. In the next video, I'll show you a algebraic way of determining how to change the area and volume elements from one variable to another set of variables.